Welcome. Welcome to your favorite Tennessee Titans podcast, Tennessee Titans Weekly. Jock Hulk. Jock Hulk. What's up, folks? Hey. What's going on, y'all? Hey. It's a weird, Who that nation, man? Hey, it's a weird, weird day. It is. Um, it's very weird. Because this game didn't mean nothing, but the Titans were so competitive and gritty yep. that they made it into a game. Yep. And they made it into a game where they had me on my heels where I was like, okay, we maybe can win this game. <laughs> and I wanted to win this game. It's yep. just a competitor in me because I'm a comp- I like to compete and yep. win. Yep. But uh, I mean it was a <sighs> It yeah. was, it was, once again, y'all, good loss. Good loss. And I know, man. And the Titans have, over the last two weeks, they've lost. Yeah. Okay, fair and right. square. It right. happened. Right. Uh, but the Titans have fought. And, you know, despite injuries, I mean, okay, of course, this guy didn't play today. And yeah. rightfully so. We understand. Jeff Simmons didn't play. So we had a lot of players yeah. out because this game, eh, was kind of meaningless at the moment. Right. You know right. what I mean? So right. let's, like, let's rest these guys up and be ready for week right. 17. Right. We got to win the ball game now. We got, yeah. we have to. It's, it's no question we gotta about it. We got to win. If we, I mean, if we would have won this today and we would have lost to Houston, it would have been okay because Pittsburgh lost to the Jets. Right. We want to thank the J-E-T-S. Appreciate it, Jets. Jets, 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 Jets. Jets, Jets, Jets. We appreciate hey, it. We appreciate that. Like, yes, sir. Straight up. Like, but with us, with the Khalif Raymond. Yeah. Debacle, we know that yep. that kind of cost it a little bit. It and did. It's one of those things. It's the luck of the draw. It's the luck of the Titans, man. We we yeah. we know that, and it's just how it it, it, it crumbles every time, man. It, it did, man. And it it we 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 put ourselves in this predicament all the time. This is the third year we've done this. Okay, exactly. The third last year we've done week, it. man, of the season. Last week of the season, and it it, it goes to you. Th- it, it goes back to training camp. Okay. I know we wanted to see what we had in Mariota. I know that. But if you go back and you think, maybe we should have made it a competition. Let him compete. Hey, the best man win. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That way, those early games, you would have won those early games. These kind of, these late games wouldn't have mean, wouldn't have really meant nothing. meant nothing. Right, right. You cool. see what I'm that's, saying? That's, that's true, man. Uh, yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. And so when you look at the, the, the game against the, the Saints, you know, when you look at them offensively, right, mm-hmm. you know, Ryan Tannehill is still playing great football oh, yes. even though we're losing. So, yeah, so those opportunities early in the season, yes, there would have been a chance for him to continue to grow and things like that, I right, agree. to where, you know, like he's already got 3,000 yards passing, yeah, damn 23 damn. touchdowns damn, damn. Already, already, right, already. already. Right. Right. So, yeah, so I think about that a lot. And then, you know, let's look at Let's just be real, Titans fans and Saints fans. And Texas fans from last week. Mm-hmm. Derrick Henry was, well, he was not healthy against Houston, nor did he play this game. Right. That's a big problem for us. Mm-hmm. He predicates our whole offense. Yep. He runs well, we pass well. Right. It's not the opposite, right? right. right. When he, he dictates what we do. So if we, he's breaking off, you know, 10-yard runs, 12-yard runs, then the DBs have to respect that. Right. So they come up, and our receivers go deep. Right. So now, because we don't really have a lot of vertical speed on our team, DBs now could, put, could come up, be like, man, I dare these receivers to try to get past me today. Because, right, right. you know, our wide receivers today didn't really have great, you know, Release. great games except Tajay Sharp. Right. You know, didn't have a lot of, they didn't have a lot of catches today or whatever, right, right. despite Taylor having a pretty good game throwing right. the ball. Even with that, Derrick Henry got paid today, okay? Yeah, he shows you the he value did. of what happens when you need Derrick Henry. That's right. That's and right. it's one of those things where you look at it and you're like, okay, this is how much one player has to uh, equate to Rushing, okay? Right, right. We had three, was it three or four players that had to get us to 100 yards? Yeah. You see yep. what I'm saying? Yep. And I said they did a bad, Deion Lewis did, he did service. Yeah. Daylon Dawkins did too. Daylon Dawkins actually think it's quicker than, than he, he, he is. He is. way quicker. He, he is. Uh, but it was a serviceable job. I, I don't, I mean, every time Paul Lewis ran the ball, I was like, please don't fumble the ball. Yeah, man. Please don't, please don't get hit hard enough to where you fumble the ball. Right, so, right. It's one of those things, it's like, like you said, even with the game last week, I mean, it's, it's the Texans. You see what I'm saying? I, I have no issue with the Texans. But at the same time, imagine, just imagine if 22 was him. Exactly. You see know what I'm saying? Right, uh, right. What the outcome of that game would have yes. been versus what the outcome of this game would have been. Right, so. correct. Because I will tell you all, the New Orleans Saints defensively is a very good football team. Oh, yes. Now, historically, 
The Saints have had terrible defenses. Their offense is unbelievable, and their defense is terrible. This might be Sean Payton's best overall team yep. overall when you look at talent, right? Um, there's been better offenses that he's had, but he hasn't had as good of a defense as he does now. And, and you know, when you look at it, their run defense is good, pass defense is good. Hey, they they did a really good job. Now, Janoris Jenkins, hey, he struggled out there today, you know, first game uh, with the Saints with Eli Apple being hurt. So if I'm a Saints fan, I'm concerned in that regard, right, when you play against the 49ers and those teams. But against us, you know, that was kind of covered up by the fact that their front four was destroying our offensive line. And I'm, I'm going to talk about y'all. Offensive linemen during the show. Yeah. It's unbelievable how bad they played today. Terrible. It's the, it's, I call it the, the, the tip scale, okay? So, like you just said, the, the Saints' offense has always been dope. They just needed a good defense. Yes, right. Now that defense is starting to rise up, too. Yeah, man. Whew. And with the, 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 the drafting of Marshawn Lattimore. You remember I told you about yes, when sir. he came out of college, Ohio State, man. I was high on Marshawn. Yeah. His technique is awesome. I mean, the way he tracks the ball is awesome. I mean, it's just one of those things. And they have a whole – they have Marshawn, they have Eli Apple, they have Von Bell. Ohio State. Ohio State trio. Yeah, okay? Man. Yes, sir. So, I mean, what I've seen, man, and to see the Hall of Fame of Drew Brees in person when I went to the game, that was amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. It was amazing. I mean, I, mad respect. Yeah, man. Mad respect versus what we played last week. <laughs> Yeah, and then Drew Brees, man, you know, in the first half was was frustrated. Was very and, you know, yeah, because he was getting man. sacked. I, he, he was getting hit, yeah. and so um, you know, and I I think you know overall with the Saints, the one concern I'd say is it looked to me like they only have Malcolm uh, Michael Thomas. They oh. got they got they got Jared Cook, the former tight end, at tight end. Don't get me wrong, but you can't depend but, on him. Yeah, all you can't the time. all the time, man. So you need He's another receiver, man. If I'm in the draft next year if, if for the Saints, I'm looking for a number two I, receiver, I'm right? Because Michael Thomas has 130 something uh, catches this year. Granted, if Drew Drew Brees comes back. Right, right. That's right. that's something I talked to a couple of Saints fans. That's what they're they actually think that this is Drew Brees' last year. And I'm like, you sure this is last year? Which I know he's 41. Yeah. But if I mean they go to the Super Bowl and win it, I mean it's a way to go out, man. That is, it would be. It would go be. out on your horse. I it would be, have man. respect. I hey, do it, bro. I, I get it. I get yeah. it. Like no no love lost, dog. I yeah. mean, I, I yeah. it, it was a hard, gritty game. It was. It, it, it was a great game, it man. Was, it was a great game to watch. Hey, dude. fourteen nothing, man, up on the Saints. Man. I was like, I said, this is gonna be a good game. I, yeah, exactly. A good game. It just yeah. The, the the effect of the Drew Brees, man. You you let him come back in. That's right, man. It, That's so. right. And you mentioned this earlier when you and I talked earlier about the fact that we let. A short field for the Saints. Oh, yeah. And at times when we didn't, they ended up punting the football. Mm -hmm. So defensively, when we had them back on their heels, we did a great job. Did a great job. But you can't play Drew Brees and 200 yeah. catches a year, Michael Thomas out. Can't guard Mike is his Instagram handle. Right. You know, so so you know, you have to look at it like these these guys are they they're unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And so the New Orleans Saints and the NFC would be a problem. They can be beat. Oh, yeah. I mean, because we we were with we were with them until the Khalif right. Raymond debacle right. and the fact that we didn't have Derrick Henry. We still was in the game. You know right. what I mean? So right. and we still had other players purposely out of Dory Jackson. Those guys yep. we had out on purpose. purpose. Yep, on, on purpose. purpose. Yep. On purpose. So yeah. So so Ja. Yes, sir. So we lost the football game. Uh -huh. Not happy about it, of course, because right. that's two losses in a row that we've had, right? right? Right. So you know, trying to get into the playoffs right now. We need a win, and we're in. It's just what it is. win Titans. Just win. Right. But. Could you give us two reasons as to why we lost the game? So one reason, not keeping your foot on your on their neck. Yes. Okay, so it was mm. up 14 nothing. Yep. In the first half, though. Yes, sir. And it, it was looking like, man, the offense is clicking. We're, we're, we're dialing up plays that, hey, we don't have running back, but we're gonna get creative with it. The the 40 yard, uh, 30, what a 40 yard one, 40 yard one uh yard run by AJ Brown was amazing. It was. The the pass to John Smith was amazing. Okay? But the offense is stalled out in the second half. It did, man. Fizzled, you see what I'm saying? Bro. I mean, it, it, it was one of those things when I seen it. I said, okay, offensive line can't get on track to the point where I'm like, oh, man, here we go. We're stalling out. Yeah. And when you play on a team like Drew Brees and when you play on a hot offense like Michael Thomas and Drew Brees and Alvin Kamara, you have to keep your foot on their neck. If we were up 21 to nothing going into the half, that momentum is going with you. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. No adjustments. No adjustments. No adjustments in the second half by a long shot on offense and defense. And when we woke up, we woke up late. Right. We keep we waking up late, man. It we did that like, last week. Exactly. And we doing it this week. And I'm like, guys, you can't wake up late. You have to to keep your foot on it. Like you did the Raiders. Keep yeah. your foot on their neck. Yeah. And that, that because because of number 22. They yep. DBs, like you said, don't respect it. Oh. I mean, after uh, AJ got his his, his his first catch, which was 34 yards, he was blanking the rest, the of, the rest of the game. The rest of the game. And rest I'm like, okay, 
What are we going to do to dial it up? Lucky we have Tannehill who can make plays and extend plays, but he was holding on to the ball a little bit too long. Yeah, he was, he was. But, he I was. mean, it's, it's okay. It's okay. But um, I go back to Lewis who was running. It's just when you got your foot on a neck like a high-powered team like them, you keep it on their neck. That's right. And we were doing that in, in, in with Tannehill at the ham. But I, I don't know what it was about the Saints that – it just it, it one thing they're they're a dome team so you had the advantage with the weather yeah, it was right. wet and it was raining yeah you had the advantage even the Saints fans saying the same thing they're like man y'all got the advantage it, y'all outside they don't play good outside that's a dome team they, they don't they're you they're away games they are terrible the they, Saints it, are. exactly exactly and like you said Drew Brees was frustrated mm-hmm. they mean they had him flustered Dean Pease was dialing up a game I was like okay Dean Pease is 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 pulling out the stops early I'm like yeah. okay. This is pretty dope. Can we continue? And we weren't able to continue. So that's number one. <sighs> number two is the Khalif Raymond debacle, man. Yeah, man. That whole thing, and this goes back, and I never complained about the riffs. You never heard me once complain about yep. the riffs. Yep. But today I am, okay? Tell him, Jock. That was a couple calls, man. The one called on Tajay Sharp, where yes. they were holding. Yes. Uh, the, the Janoris Jenkins was holding. Yep. I'm like, no call? What's up? But the big, the big play that cost us the game was when Khalif got hit. Okay, so in the NFL rule book, we know, okay, defensive player, any hit to the head That's right, is man. a 15-yard penalty. It is. Right? Yep. Well, he, I mean, he literally held Khalif at the hips, swung around, player comes out, boom, to the shoulder. Head right. hit to the head. That's a flag. Yep. Reps, where the 15 yard 15 yep. yard penalty? That's right, man. That's then he right. fumbles the ball. Then you give him a short field to play with because he picks the ball up and goes downfield. What do we do? Yep. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I mean, it, it literally cost us the game. It cost us the game. It did. And, and the sad part about it, there's no the refs are not responsible for the actions that they have done in this in this day and age of refereeing. Okay. Right. You should be held accountable, just like the players, the coaches, the organization. Right. You've you've messed up calls like the call last year. I heard a bunch of Saints fans talking about, hey, we got robbed last year. And they got robbed. Mm-hmm. They got robbed. They literally made a gun. They it's the more, a gun maybe the worst head. I've ever seen in my life. But I've never seen nothing like Ram that. Ram fans life. can admit that too. They got robbed. Yeah, they dog. got robbed. They got robbed. So, what I think you should start doing NFL is you start finding these refs. You should start docking their pay. You should call them accountable because if you hold somebody accountable, then hey, yep. it comes down to it. Hey, I got to do my job. Yeah, man. And my job's right. in the rules. Hey, that was a 15 yard penalty. That, did not, that negates the fumble. That puts us on wherever he was on the 40 or whatever, 45. We were on a roll, guys. I believe if he wouldn't have fumbled that ball, we would have scored a touchdown. Yeah, man. You would have gave him about a minute and maybe 50 to breeze to play with. And then he would have had to come down and either score a touchdown or you really had to score a touchdown. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Right, so right. the referees have, have, have messed us over a lot this year. And it's something that I that you as a fan you hate to see mm-hmm. because they're taking the the, the integrity out the game, mm-hmm. and you're costing us games. At this point, you're costing us games. Hey, Lee, you need to do something about this. What about you, man? Well, one the third quarter, okay. right now for the season, the Tennessee Titans have done very good in the third quarter. The last several weeks, we haven't. Right. We gave up 21 points in the third quarter. 21. To me, that changed the whole dynamic of the game, right? When you look at the third quarter, man, look, overall, we couldn't stop Michael Thomas. He started warm up in the third quarter. I mean, he, he, he was getting hot. Uh, you know, DBs were not covering well. Uh, you know, it really, that's all he was looking for. Right. And now, Jerry Cook had two touchdowns as well, don't get me wrong. Uh, but, you know, that was the quarter where we just kind of took the, like you say, took the foot off their neck, right? The pedal was definitely on the brakes for us, man. We just kind of just stopped, and they just started pouring on points on us, man, just like back to back to back. It was two touchdowns. back In, in yep. five plays, it was two five touchdowns, plays, right? right? So the third quarter, to me, was huge. Now, we made a valiant effort to come back in the game, but it just wasn't enough. And again, we look at the Khalif Raymond play, that changed the whole dynamic. But we, the Titans, rarely do this. We rarely put ourselves in holes when we have the lead. Yep. Usually, a lot of times we have a lead, we got a lead. That's it. You know what I'm saying? And so we usually don't give up leads. Yep. But we did do that today, and the third quarter was the main reason. You know, I, I, I just didn't understand how just defensively, uh, we just just fell off, and it we just played laxed. Uh, you know, DBs weren't in, in the right spot. The receivers were wide open. Jared Cook was wide open. And then 
you you told me this and I saw it when we had linebackers and guys sitting there looking at each other like, hey, that's your man, that's your man, or whatever. Those guys, Alvin Kamara getting guarded by a D tackle out there, damn it. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta look at that. The third quarter was a major problem. Second, now I haven't talked about this in a while. Okay. All right. I I I've been a, a big promoter of the offensive line over the past three weeks. Not today, guys. The offensive line stunk, yep. especially in the passing game. Did you guys see Taylor Lewan, man, just man, get bullied out there, bro? Destroyed, getting man. destroyed. On the, now, look at it. Tannehill got sacked five times on the, on his fourth sack. I'm trying to think who it was on the. Uh, I think it was. I think it was. I might have been Cameron Jordan on the Saints. Literally, or no, Shot Total, the former man, UT of all. Dumb. He bullied Taylor Lewan. Down said, hut, boom! Yep. And Taylor Lewan was on the ground, like, looking at the star, like, I can't believe this just happened. Mm -hmm. He just went straight line and made the sack. It was an awful play. Now, linemen will get beat sometimes in yep. the trenches. I get that. But five sacks? Five? Now, two of them I put on Ryan Tannehill. Because mm -hmm. it took him a long time to throw the ball. He's sitting there just looking around, doing the Mariota dance. He's sitting there just like, <laughs> just sitting there, da -da 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 -da. I got all day to throw the ball. No, you don't. Get rid of it, okay? So I give them that. But I think the offensive line struggled mightily, especially in the second half where we really needed Tannehill to be available to throw the football. Um, you know, even on the inside, man. But, you know, again, the Saints have a very good front four, mm -hmm. but it doesn't give the excuse to give them five sacks. And, you know, a lot of it was them just getting bullied. Look, we pay Taylor Lewan big dollars. He's not playing like it. Taylor Lewan has had a very disappointing season given the fact he's yeah. been suspended for four games. And a lot of the games where he sucks – we lose. I agree. And the run, our run offensive lineman piece, when we are run blocking, they don't do bad. It's Oops. pass blocking has always been mm -hmm. the issue, man. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. So, yeah, man. So, so, let me ask you this. Standouts. Who's the standout for the game for you? So, I'm going to tell you this, man. Me and Jacques both know the roster very, very well. Very well can yeah. tell you where they went to college. Mm -hmm. Can tell you their first and last. I mean, everything. Their number, where mm -hmm. they come from, where they was drafted, traded, free agent. But there was one guy I've never heard of in my life, man, mm -hmm. who balled out today. The rookie, Derek Roberson, hey. number 50. I was like, who was that? <laughs> I, I called Jacques. I said, who's number 50? Yeah, I said, I don't know, man. <laughs> he, I was like, wow, he, he had two and a half sacks today. And... You know, one of the the half sack he had, man. You know, Jarrell Casey had um had helped him on the sack. It was it was really Roberson's sack, man. Roberson had an unbelievable game. Now, I don't want to jump on the high horse and be like, man, we done found something here, bro. But we have missed a fast pass rusher. A lot when we played the Houston Texans, Deshaun Watson just like against Tampa Bay when he was getting sacked. They have speed on the outside for Tampa. We don't have that. We we might have a pass rush going around, but you have somebody fast. That, that's been our issue. But Drew Brees is a stand-up quarterback, mm -hmm. and we have some speed and get down the line. We can get some sacks. Yeah. I really hope we found a diamond in the rough. Hey. I heard Robeson's interview. He's like, man, I've been waiting for this. Right. He looks like he's ready. You know what I'm saying? He's sitting there doing this like, man, I'm, I'm with it. I'm here. I'm here. We let Sharif Finch go. I'm here. Derek Robeson. Excellent job. He he shocked me, bro. I was like, who is this dude, man? He did. He called me. He's like, who's who's number 50? I said, man, I didn't I thought it was Harold Landry. Yeah, I got you, bro. But then I had to go back and look at the play. I was like, wow. I said, yes, that's like, quick. Wow, exactly. So what about for you, man? Man, me is Tajay Sharp, man. Tajay. So Tajay's a weird player, man. I was saying this at the game. I said, Tajay comes with comes up with big catches at the right time. It can be All third time. and 30. And Tajay to <laughs> turn around and got you a first down. He's like, how did he do that, man? He, in the next rest of the game, he only had one catch, but that right. one catch was very important. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was 68 yards and two touchdowns. Mm -hmm. Yep. And one play that he that Tannehill extended, he was right there. I said, okay, it's touchdown. The last play when Tannehill found him in the back of the end zone Man. was amazing. Amazing. Throw and catch. And throw and catch. I said, okay, Tajay, and I've heard he runs very good well. He very good routes. Yeah. And you can tell in the way he can run his routes and he can catch. So Tajay, man, he's one of those weird players where he's not going to get you 60, 80 catches in a year. Right, right. right. You maybe get 30, maybe get 25. Yeah. But those 25 catches are very important at the right time. They are. And when he showed me, he can do it at the right time. Yeah, man. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So what he, I mean, I mean he's catching the ball. Was he catches of, the football. I was like, I was amazed. I was like, Tajay. And I was, I was telling uh, somebody sitting in front of me, I was like, hey, I said, Right when I said it, I said, Tajay makes crazy plays at the right time. He <laughs> made a crazy play. It was gotcha. a first down. I was like, I said, see, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. 
it's amazing. And, and, and he just he gets to stand, especially when a day where AJ Brown got that bundled up by Marshawn Lattimore. Right. Yes, sir. Right? Yep. Corey Davis was being Corey Davis. I yep. mean, he was. He gets open, but I mean, he's gonna catch it, and when yep. he catches, he looks surprised, like, "Oh, I caught the ball." I caught the ball. I can't believe it. Right. I caught, I caught the ball. Right. But I just with Tajay, Tajay's a good serviceable receiver when you need him. Yes. Yes. So that's my absolutely my, my standouts, man. man. Absolutely, my, my definitely. So we know this young man right here. All right. Didn't play today, right? He was on the sideline, you know, chopping it up with a lot of people. The referees. Yep, exactly. He had a good smile on his face. I mean, he looks like, hey man, hey, look, I'm just chilling today, man. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat some of this New Orleans gumbo. Right. You know, I might jam some hot boys and some old no <laughs> limit. You know what I'm saying from New Orleans? You know, some Lil Wayne or something, Lil Wayne, right? Man. He's probably had it in his headphones, right? Right, right. But if we had Derrick Henry playing today, at this game, at a hundred percent, ninety percent. Would we have won this game? Yes. Okay. I think we would. I, okay. I think we would have won the game last week, too. Oh, we would have won that. So, oh, what, what, what Derek does is he gives you that home run capability. He would have busted, especially on that that defense, which is very light on the, on the back end. Yes, sir, it is. You know what I mean? And, and, and I think they got, I think got Matthew Tao. What was his name? Yeah, Matt, Matt Tao, Tao, star middle linebacker. Matt Tao. Right. I guess Tao. Yeah, that's him. Derrick Henry, especially what I've seen when Dalen Dawkins was able to get get penetration get to the second level. Yep. Uh, Lewis was able to get to the second 180 level. 180-pound running backs. I said if Derrick was out here, <laughs> they would have to respect the run. <laughs> yes. And what happens when Derrick's in the game, the game slows down. It does. You know it does. The game Tell him, Jacques, man. Slows Facts, no paper. Damn, dog. The game slows down to the point where you're chewing up clock. You run in there, he's five, six, seven yards here. And all of a sudden, you give him the ball. Hey. 50 yard run. Yep. Next thing you know, you do it again. 40 yard run. Then that play action opens up. And then Tanner Hill's out here balling. So, yes, we would have won both games, actually. Yep. And if he's healthy, we go into the, 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 the playoffs team. The playoffs, like this, it's dangerous. What about it, you? It is, man. So, yes, I do think we would have won this okay. football game. This game was close for the most part. Very I mean, close. I know at the end we've lost by 10 points. Um, so, those that might not have seen the game might have been like, oh, okay, they got, that was a nice win or whatever. But Derrick Henry would have controlled the narrative yep. where it wouldn't have been a fast-paced game, as you just said. And I think as well, you know, the Saints front four, again, they're, they're beasts. Right. You know, they're, they're, good, they're some good ball players. But once you get past to that next level, can they make the tackle? I don't know, right? Mm -hmm. I, just, I don't know. I'm mm -hmm. not sure. Right. And so, you know, when you look at Derrick Henry, the reason why we've won so many football games is because – they have to respect the run. Mm -hmm. And then we have the play action for, uh, for Ryan Tannehill, who throws it at 70, 80% completion percentage off yep. this, right? Mm -hmm. That dictates the whole game. So it's not where it's Tannehill versus Drew Brees. Right. And we know Drew Brees is going to win a football game. Right. One, because it's Drew Brees. Right. And you got number 13 out on the field, right? Mm -hmm. So that was today's game. It was Tannehill versus Drew Brees. Tannehill did his best. Got 28 points on the board, mm -hmm. right? Hey, you can't really ask for much more than this for Ryan Tannehill, right? Okay. But... You know, the equalizers, Derrick Henry, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Now, the, the Saints had Alvin Kamara. Okay, Kamara did not play well in the first half at all. As a matter of fact, Drew Brees is looking at him like, bro, what are you doing? Because at one play, Kamara had the ball. He was wide open. He ran out of bounds. Like, what are you doing? And in the second half, he started picking up a little bit. The run game, because that's what happens in the game. As the game goes on, linemen, linebackers get tired. Get tired. You don't yeah. think the Saints would have been tired tackling Derrick Henry in the second half? Exactly. What? So, yeah, so absolutely. Look, put it like this. Yes, we want to win the football game with Derrick Henry. It's not an excuse. That's just what we think. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely, right. man. So, ho. Yes. When I was at the game. Okay. And this has been happening all season. I'm a, I'm a season ticket holder. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, you are. The away fans outweigh the home fans. Okay. Who that, who that said they're going to beat them Saints? Man, you heard it on TV. I did. To be there live to hear who that, who that, who that say going to beat them Saints. You just kept hearing it. Yeah. And hearing it. Hearing, I have fans behind me. I have fans to the left of me. Yeah, man. And I'm like, I'm like, where's our fans at? Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. We was where's our PSLs? Where 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 are our fans not showing up? So let me ask you this. Yes, sir. There's a problem. It's not just us. It's around the league. It is. It's around the it's, league. It's around the league. But there's a problem with fans not coming to the game, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And we can get this discussion going on in the comment section too. Please, the comment, answer how you want to. How do you fix an organization when half your fans show up and then the other half of the, yeah. the fans from the opposing team? And I, right. got a, I, got a, I got a couple of things, too. Go ahead. What okay. do you think? Well, I think this, man. Well, one, 
Nashville is probably the top three destinations in the United States of America of, of where people want to come and celebrate and party. Because, man, you can party here in Nashville. Oh, yeah. Nashville's off the chain, guys. Yep. And we're saying it like for real. We're born and raised. Exactly, man. Born and we've, seen, we've seen how it's changed. Yep. And Nashville's in close proximity to about 80% of the NFL teams. Atlanta. Within a, Atlanta, New Orleans, Carolina, Carolina, New Orleans, Carolina, right. Yeah. Chicago, Detroit, you know, Green Florida. Bay, oh, Florida, right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Everywhere. At, Nashville's in the middle of everything. Right. Kansas City, St. Oh, well, St. Louis on the team, but you know what I mean. Right. So when you look at that, fans are going to come down here and pay top dollars for tickets. Right. Okay. So as a season ticket holder, or even as a, a ticket holder, you might have a ticket for ninety bucks. Mm -hmm. But if I'm coming all the way from Green Bay and I'm like, look, man, I'm, I'll pay two hundred for that ticket. Right. That's hard for a fan to turn down, right? right? So that's really a hard controllable. Now, I don't know if we're as bad as other teams. We're not as good as the best teams. Because we're still a newborn baby when it comes to the NFL. We're not the Packers, the Bears, the Vikings, the Steelers, the Cowboys, teams that have just been there for years. They grew up, you know, Cowboys fans. They mamas and daddies were Cowboys. They grandfather, they great grandfather. It's just a lineage of fan, of, of, of family, you know what I'm saying, that that's what they know. The Titans, they started, we started here in 99. You know what I'm saying? That's still a very young fan base. And I, I was an adult in 99. So, you know, we haven't been there that long. You know what I mean? So, I think the part of it is fans just have to stop selling their tickets. Right. They, because we have tickets that are sold. You know, mm -hmm. Our games do, you know, get to They might not sell out as we used to. Man, it was unbelievable when we had sellouts back Man. maybe 10 or 15 years, 20 years ago. It was unbelievable. Man. We had the hardest, we was the, we were the hardest place to play for years. We were man. number one. Number, we one, number in, one in the NFL. We're that's facts. One. That's not being biased. That's facts. Yep. But as years went on, you know, losing seasons and mm -hmm. things, you know, hey, you know, if I'm a ticket holder, I done paid $100 for a ticket. Oh, you coming from Chicago? You going to drink the city up too? And you going you gonna to pay $300 for a ticket? Mm -hmm. There you go. Take it. Take it. Mm -hmm. So I think, I just think the, the, the fans just have to stop selling their tickets. And that might be hard to do. And again, this is a dynamic that's going over in the, in the NFL. You got teams like the Chargers, Jags. Fans don't even show up to the game, period. The whole stadium is that team. Mm -hmm. We're about 50-50. Some teams, maybe about 40-60, their fans and us. But we're kind of in the middle, I think, man. But I think that's the piece. What about for you, man? So me, of course, is winning. Really? Yes. I mean, it's winning. Um, and what you see is and also winning in culture, okay? Okay. So we go back. We look at the Predators, okay? I don't know how many of y'all Predators fans. I'm, I was never yeah. a big hockey fan. <laughs> but yep. I'm going to say this. If you ever been to a Predators game, man. It's, it's one of the most amazing things it ever. Is. It is. And I think the, what, when the, the Predators were established in 98 or 97. Ni 96, I think. 96, I think okay. 96. They're still a fairly young team. They are, they are, they are. You see what I'm saying? But they've established a culture. And I go back and I say this, it's a cultural thing. Man, I, and I'm looking at the Saints fans, right? I'm looking at the, the energy of the Saints fans. You can tell it energizes their team, right? Yeah, yeah man. It's like, a, it's like a, a connection that they got, okay? I'm listening to this, and I'm listening to who that, who that, and you can feel the energy and the energy, and they're getting it from their fans. Yeah. And I said, I bet it's amazing to go to the Superdome. Man. And sit there and watch a game and just listen to the Saints fans just just go off. And just listen to their fans just, hey, who that, who that, who that? Yeah, we got tightened up. Yeah. You see, you feel me? But the thing is, it's, a, it's, it's one of these things is we started off so hot and we simmered down. Mm -hmm. And we had a losing streak. Man. So and the years. fans didn't feel like, you know what, I ain't sticking with this crap. Yeah, man. I ain't still y'all let me down in the Super Bowl. Yep. It was one of those things where you were one yard up. That won me over. Yep. When I seen it, I said, okay, I'm a Titans fan for life. I don't care. Yeah. I'm tightened up regardless. We we've been, you've been down the losing, the losing man, road. Good Lord, yes. We've been down and okay, we need to fix this. We need to we all about fixing it. How you fix this? How you fix that? Right. I forgive over my team. Yeah. But I've seen some fans that out there like, you know what? I got better stuff to do on a Sunday. You see yep. what I'm saying? We got a lot of bandwagon fans. We got guaranteed the Titans started winning next season. We went 13-3. and three. You'll find out, hey, how, I, when was you a Titans fan? Mm -hmm. You a Titans fan? You a Titans fan? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, when I look at it, when we get there, and it's coming. Guys, This is we, we have to think about this. And just people, just think about it. This is the first year tight that, that, that we've had a first year offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. been, that's, his play call has been questionable, but it's getting better. Second year head coach. This is the second year Derrick Henry is actually going off. Yep. 
Tannehill's first couple of games is amazing. We got a, a, a AJ Brown who's almost a thousand yards. You got John Hugh Smith who's emerging. Mm-hmm. You got your corners who got hurt, but they I mean the defense is rising. We got injuries. But this is the first year that we've seen this. Yeah, exactly. We're man. going into a new decade. Now just imagine how we can change this whole decade. Yeah. Yeah. And you can come up with a whole new culture in 2020. You see what I'm saying? I'm, yes, getting, I'm getting somewhere with this. I got you. You're changing it from two, the, 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 the last decade, which is 2019, right? Mm-hmm. I call it the Jimmy G effect. Okay. Jimmy G. When San Francisco 49ers signed Jimmy G and they got Jimmy G and they beat us back in 2016. And we were in the same position. We were 8-5, mm-hmm. bro. Yeah. 8-5. We were like, okay, we're going to sign 49ers. We're about to beat the brakes off these jokers. <laughs> And Jimmy G came down and woof, woof, woof. And I was like, what in the world? 49ers had number one pick for the for the past six, seven seasons. And they built that defense up. Jimmy G came up. Now look at him. Mm-hmm. Right. Almost the number one seed, number two seed in the NFC. Yeah, man. I can see, see the Titans. So my thing is once we get this winning culture back, we can pull these fans back. Yeah. And I want to get the OG fans. I want to get the fans that were here with they that they created the PSPC uh was it the PSL wall right. in the stadium. Yeah. I want that because Nashville now is maybe 70% of people from out of town. Yeah, man. People from Minnesota, New York, California. You barely rarely meet somebody that's from the city. From Nashville, exactly. So to Get that back from the to, state. From the state, exactly, yeah. exactly. So you have to win your fans back, your core fans, your core fans from Clarksville, Memphis, uh, uh, Montgomery County, Murfreesboro. Smart. You have to win them back. Yeah. And how to do it? We get winning culture, man. That's right. That's right, man. That's right. So yeah, absolutely. Good question, man. So, yeah. so another, so a question for you on this, man. Okay. So as far as the Saints game, now. Against Houston, we took some heat. <laughs> um, we're not impressed with your team, right? Hey, and I'm, I'm sticking with it. I got you. I'm but sticking I with it. Hey, we I'm were not. sticking we were with not. it. We were not impressed. I'm and sticking with like, it. I don't think they were either, to be honest with you. I agree. Can't be. But I y'all agree. won. Y'all, hey, y'all got the SC South. Hey, it is what it is. I agree. Hey, that's cool. I'm that's sticking cool. with it. <laughs> <laughs> so, were you impressed with the Saints? And if so or not, who were you impressed with individually? So, I actually was impressed with the Saints. Okay. Okay. I, okay. I, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. If I'm not, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna tell the truth. Okay, sir. Yeah, yes, man. I was. Drew okay. Brees was amazing, dog. Yeah, man. He is as advertised. To see a Hall of Famer play in person and to see him put passes where defenders were in position. Yeah. I mean, Bob was in position when he threw that ball to Jared Cook and Jared Cook caught it. I was like, now Jared, you play for us. And you didn't even do that. He never did that. He never he did, never it, did that. You never did it. Was it just Once a every year of the game or something. I'm like, Jerry Cook looked like a Hall of Fame out he there. like a Hall of Fame. I'm like, okay. I mean, he my, throwing passes to Michael Thomas. I said, this is amazing to see a Hall of Famer come out here and get hot. And he got hot at the right time. Yeah. We had him in the first half, but to see it in person, he impressed me, man. What about you? <sighs> the receiver he was throwing to the most, number 13, <laughs> Michael Thomas. Go. As you all, I don't know if you all know, but Michael Thomas broke the NFL record today. Yep. Okay, on that last, on the touchdown he had. Uh, he has the most catches in one ga- in one season more than any NFL receiver in NFL history. That's crazy. It, it was Marvin Harrison for many years, right. and so he broke that today. I mean, you know, you look at him, and he had 12 catches, 136 yards, and a touchdown. I mean, what more can – every time Drew Brees was throwing, he's throwing at Michael Thomas. Yep. And What's so crazy is Michael Thomas made all the catches. He didn't have any drop balls. You know, last year, I think he led the league in, in catching, like as far as catching percentage. He had like one drop ball last year. He's doing the same thing this year. Mm-hmm. Michael Thomas is unbelievable. He's the best receiver I've seen us play in years. Now, I've, I've always put DeAndre Hopkins up there, and he's still up there. And, right. and it's he getting a little older, but he's still there. Michael Thomas is there, man. Yep. And, and like, you know, I, Mike, Michael, uh, Mike Evans had an unbelievable game against us as well. But man, Mike Thomas is special, man. Yeah, you and see, see it in person. I, I know, man. I, he was, man. Mike Thomas was a problem. Right. It was no, we had no answer. And I know we have injuries. Uh, you know, we don't have Malcolm Butler nor Dory Jackson out there. I get that. That might have changed the dynamic, but I still feel he probably I mean, would have got ten he, catches. Still, man, he would have broke the record. Right. Exactly. Right. Absolutely. He still had a touchdown. You right, know what I mean? So right. yeah. So yeah. So Michael Thomas definitely, man. Right. Yep. Okay. So yes. Let me ask you this. You okay. Know, you know this this. This game is swept on the road. We done. Yes, it we is. We got the most important game. Our playoffs start next week. It does. Our playoffs yep. start next week. It does. 
What's the game plan, dog? I know we this is out. We gonna we gonna do a, a show, a special yep. show, just yep. for that game. Okay. Yep. But give me a brief, brief little what snippet, I guess. Snippet, right? So, as you all know, Pittsburgh lost to the NYJETS, Jets, 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 right? Jets. Okay. Jets. So Thank you, that's Jets. that's great. We appreciate it, Gang Green. We appreciate it. But that's giving us an opportunity. Though we lost today, we are the sixth seed because Pittsburgh now is a seventh seed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, Houston, as far as a game plan, okay. Houston has already sold up the fourth seed, okay? So they're already in the playoffs. Deshaun Watson got hurt against uh, his ankle really bad. You know what I'm saying? He looked real bad. Will Fuller got hurt. Mm -hmm. Will Fuller stays hurt. His Will Fuller is a problem, period, yeah. Yeah. when he's healthy. Hey, we know this, okay? He's, he's giving the Titans fits yes. when he's healthy. Some, for some reason, he always plays against us. I don't know why. He'd be out for eight weeks and play against the Titans both games. It's weird. But um, if I'm Houston, I'm resting Deshaun Watson. If Will Fuller probably won't be there. I'm probably resting Carlos Hyde. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely resting DeAndre Hopkins. I mean, you definitely got to rest Deshaun Watson because of his ankle. You'd have to. So even Larry Me Tunsil got hurt a little bit. I would rest these guys. Zach Cunningham, the former Vanderbilt alum. I would rest him. I would rest him. Yeah. Man, Zach Cunningham is unbelievable. He's a beast. He's a beast. Mm -hmm. So I would rest these guys, which helps us as a team as far as the Titans, okay? Now, I will be real with you Texans fans, honestly. If that happens, if y'all have A.J. McCarron playing quarterback, okay, all right, and we beat y'all, right? I'm not going to be ranting like, oh, yeah, we booked the Texans or whatever, blah, blah. But what I will say is we will see y'all in the playoffs week one, right? right? So, I, I'm, again, I, I, I would think that the Texans would play their backups, and this will give us an opportunity, especially with this young man playing, Adore Jackson coming back. Uh, it will give us a chance. And I hope we haven't limped too much from this game, meaning Corey Davis went out with a concussion, Khalif Raymond out with a concussion. Uh, even John Smith got hurt a little bit. So I hope we didn't limp too much from this game, but if we have enough players to go play this game, beat the Texans, and get in the playoffs, man. So I think the game plan is get these folks healthy and just play hard, run the football with Derrick Henry. They can't stop him whether they had Zach Cunningham, J.J. Watt, or whatever, or whoever out there run this young man throughout the game. If he's healthy, we will win the football game. What about for you, bro? So my whole thing is we basically we rested, like you said, <laughs> I call it rested. We rested Day here. We rested Adore. We rested Humphreys is not playing. Mm -hmm. uh, we've rested uh, uh, Darren Bates didn't play on special teams. Right. I think that's one reason they Saints were going off on special man, teams too. They were, wasn't they? Yeah. You yeah. made mention of that yeah, early that too. Going off, man. So what happens is the say if they do rest their players, right? Say if we play AJ McCarron, I would still rest Derrick Henry because Ooh. Uh, hear me out because I want him so healthy. We play out in the playoffs. Okay. Then it's like, ooh, we got a healthy Derrick Henry. But the Texans will see a different team, right? Last week, they seen Tannehill. They seen A.J. Brown. They seen Corey Davis. They didn't see Humphreys. They didn't see this young man right here. They didn't see a Dory. You see what I'm saying? So when you see a different team, it's a different scheme, right? Yeah. Depends on how healthy this young man is. But if he's healthy... Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! You you've at that point, if D Henry is healthy, your game plan changes to the point where it goes back to running this young man play action, boom, D yep. threat. Yep. Dory Jackson on the other side, that eliminates. He has that speed threat, so he has that speed to keep up with D Hop. Granted, D uh, Dory sometimes you know pay pi here, pi there. Yeah. I can live with that. But that gives you another threat to the point where, hey, I got this side of the field. Hey, Byrd plays better. Vaccaro plays better. Yep. Brock is going to play better, who actually had a good game. He did have a good game. Tremaine yeah. Brock had a good Tremaine game. Tremaine Brock had a good game. So what that does is it brings in a whole other dynamic. Then you have Roberson, number 50, yep. who I want to see how he does next week. If, he, if he's consistent, I'm like, okay, maybe we have a diamond in the rough, like you said. Mm -hmm. Get some pressure on Watson because something that I've seen with the, when they played the Buccaneers, was those 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 fast linebackers were able to get pressure on Watson? They was, were. It was rattling him. Yes. It was rattling. Man. He was throwing off his back foot. Yes, he was. I mean, it, he was overthrowing him and D, D Hop went on the same. They page. were arguing. Bill O'Brien, all them jokers was arguing. They, they were trying to figure it out. It was like okay, and, and Texas fans, this is why I said what I said. It wasn't being emotional. It's being truthful. Your team needs a lot of work. Okay. 
DBs, I got some decent DBs. Y'all do. Yeah, I, I, surprisingly. They'll do. Your DBs is awesome. <laughs> Vernon Hargreaves, I've always liked Vernon Hargreaves. His technique is cold. He's right. just, he just over pursuits. He needs to just settle down and calm. He reminds me of Butler a lot because he's so aggressive. Right. Uh, Roby, that they yeah, got. Yeah, Roby, yes. Ro right. Roby, he's a, he's a decent slot corner. You yeah. got, they got Reed. Reed in the safety. Reed in safety. He's, he's good. Yeah. Tayshawn's going to smack you in the, mouth, in the mouth. But your team has a lot of work. See, if I have a team built like this, I want to go deep in the playoffs. I just don't want to go in the first round and lose. I'm trying to get to the second round. I'm trying to get to the Super Bowl. All right? Your team has had plenty of chances. Plenty of chances, man. Plenty of in chances. In a weak AFC South. In a weak AFC South at that, when you had J.J. Watt, J.V. Davion Clowney, Andre Johnson. I can even go back to years in past when you had Adrian Foster. Right, exactly. Matt Shaw. Right. Y'all had the formula to win a Super Bowl. Yeah. What's wrong with your team? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. What's wrong with your team? You're, you're, I mean, it's just all over the board. So when you go to and you play the Buccaneers, you almost lose to the Buccaneers. You trying to sell me on some stuff to say, hey, we're this and we're that. This young man plays. That's gonna be a. I mean, you think Reed want to tackle him all day? Huh, Cunningham will. Yeah. Cunningham will, 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 will love to tackle D. Henry, but eventually he'll get tired. He get tired. He get tired. You said AJ Brown had a huge game against yeah, him. Yeah, he did. He did. You he see did. what I'm saying? So, like I said, this is something that we're gonna break down. Yeah, we will. We sure will. We're gonna break. We're gonna find. It's, we're gonna find tune it. We're gonna we gonna comb through it. We gonna we, matter of fact, Hulk. The Texas fans gave us flack in the comment section. We can break their team down. We can do something unique. How, hey, how can y'all win the game? <laughs> if you want us to break your team, we will break it down. We will. How, sure how, will. how can the Texas... It, it, if, they, if they watch the preview show, they'll see the things we talked about was exactly what happened during the it, game. Exactly what happened during yep. the game. If you, if, I can tell you how the Texans can produce and maneuver through the playoffs and win the playoffs. I can tell you. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But I mean, we like I said, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll talk we'll about get the to that. We will. We, we, we will get to. We will. But good job to the Saints. Yep. Um, the Saints have a good team. They do. Um, the NFC South, the NFC period is 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 heavy, man. It's it's it it's a it very is. heavy it conference is. to the point where the AFC is kind of light in the it's a light conference. Yep. The NFC is very competitive. They Saints are gonna have a hard road to try to get to the yeah. Super Bowl. Yep. But I mean, what I seen, I mean, they they're an impressive team, man. And we and we're more impressive impressive. Keeping up with a, a high power team with half our team injured. Right, exactly. That's people. I know it's, it sucks that we lost to the Saints, but for us to keep up with the Saints like we did and how power, high power, how our offenses is and our defense limped and we 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 are scratching and clawing. We got this team got grit, man. Yeah, and they the do. Team, and the team don't want to lose, and I, and I like it. I like the competition. Yeah. So yeah, man. even though we lost, let's take that same energy and that same grit. And let's take it to the to the Texans and, and smack them, man. Smack them up. Yeah, man. Smack them up. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, take that bull by the horn and break that. <laughs> That's right. That's right, man. That's right, man. So, ladies and gentlemen, that ends our show, folks. As always, y'all, we truly appreciate you all tuning in to our show. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, remember, now, like, share, subscribe. Hey, tell your auntie, your uncle, your grandmama. Tell them all, man. Tell everybody, man. It's a good podcast. Good show. Absolutely. Absolutely, we man. Try. We try to bring the content. I know absolutely. we've been a little slow on the, you know, the holidays, everything. Yeah, absolutely. We, absolutely. I, you know what I mean? But, yeah, we do, man. So, uh, if you want to contact us as well, you can email us at TennesseeTitansWeekly at gmail.com. We are on Twitter as well at TitansWeekly247 and on Instagram at TennesseeTitansWeekly, man. So, so, to who that nation? Hey. Merry Christmas. Yep. Hey, Happy New Year. Yep. To all of y'all. Yep. And so, you know what we do, man? Hey, tighten up as always. Tighten we up. will see y'all in a few days. We're going to talk about them Texans. And let's do what we need to do, <laughs> man. We'll talk about it. We absolutely. I, I might be listening to some DJ Screw on the way, uh, way to hey, work today, screw man. Hard, man. Hey, absolutely, man. Yes, screw sir. Hard. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, to you and yours, folks, we'll holler at you later, man. Yes, sir. That's what we do, folks. Yes, yeah. sir. Boom. <laughs>